Welcome to our City Commission meeting. We're going to open with a prayer from Pastor Nicole Martin from Messiah Lutheran Church, followed by the pledge led by General McQueen. Please rise. As I was preparing for today, one <coughs> phrase lingered in my mind. To be a servant is the mission here. As a pastor, a mom, a Navy wife, an Army kid, and now a volunteer with the PCPD, I have a pretty good understanding of a servant's heart. It will do great and amazing good with little thanks and praise. It is often the most utilized but least rewarded person in the pack, focusing not on the dollar, but how it can help another. The servant's heart will stick its neck out when others withdraw, will run into action while others shelter in place. To be a servant is the mission here, for it is the servant's heart that makes this city go. The servant's heart of Panama City weighed through the muck of sewage and the crimes of hate. They plan destination celebrations and pick up trash. They keep grass cut low and fields ready for play. They often work when the rest of us are sleeping and they sacrifice family meals and holidays to ensure the health of the community. They answer phones and direct traffic, all while following protocol, meeting safety standards and filling out oogles of paperwork to meet the city county, state, and federal, federal regulations. We pray for all of them, dear Lord, as they set their task today and the days to come. Keep them safe from all harm. But we also pray especially for the servants sitting here today, this panel of leaders, as they are called not just to be part of the mission, but to establish the mission. Let your hand be upon them, guiding their words and thinking. Give them the wisdom of Solomon to discern and judge rightly how to develop the community. Give them the ingenuity of Jacob who knew how to make a thoughtful plan that would support his family and prosper his fortune. Give them the generosity of Joseph who welcomed his brothers when he could have turned them out cold and provided for them during the threat of famine. Give them the compassion of Christ to make bold decisions that bring healing and restoration for those they serve. Bless each of these leaders to shine as a glorious example of commitment to the service for the success of the mission and the well-being of this community, Panama City, in honor and reverence to the one who breathes life, saves life, empowers life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we call the roll, please? Mayor Bernicke. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Rader. Here. Commissioner Street. Here. Commissioner Hallius. Here. Mayor, you have quorum. <clears throat> Here we have the minutes from the uh, June 28th meeting. Everybody had a chance to read those ahead of time. Any additions, deletions, so say at this time or entertain a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Yes, Mayor, I have read the minutes from the City Commission meeting of June 28th, 2022, and I'd like to move approval of them. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. General, do we have any additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda? Uh, no, sir. Okay. All right. The, um, the notice of term expiration on the Board of Trustees for the uh, supplemental retirement plan. Uh, the Board uh, for the supplemental retirement plan was designated general employees, has two positions for. Four-year terms expire on July 22nd, 2026. Please be advised that the clerk has not received any applications for these two positions. So uh, please, if you're interested, uh, if you know someone that may be interested, get a hold of Janet City Hall. Let's, uh, let's get those positions filled. The Board of Trustees for the Retirement Plan and Trust for General Employees of the City has a position open for two-year term that expires August 14, 2024. Please be advised the current member, Tiffany Hines, has expressed an interest in remaining on the board. So if anyone else is interested, please 
uh, send in your application, uh, and uh, we'll uh, consider it. We have community event announcements. Our final Teen Tuesday paint night took place June 28th at the Panama City Center for the Arts. The six-month program co-hosted by Palmetto Paint PC was free to all teens and parents. The City of Panama City, in conjunction with the Zylo Dance Studio, is hosting an eight-week summer enrichment program at Oakland Terrace Clubhouse. Students attending the camp are participating in STEAM uh, curriculum as well as weekly field trips, skating, tumble and dance classes, horseback riding, and more. Downtown Panama City came alive once again July the 4th for an incredible day of music, patriotism, and fun, celebrating the birth of our great nation. This nation's annual event, titled Salute to Freedom, featured a parade, live music, and a spectacular fireworks display sprawling over historic St. Andrews Bay. This amazing event was co-sponsored by the City of Panama City and Destination Panama City. We're taking it back to nature this summer with sunrise yoga from now until August 17th at Asbel and Sunset Yoga from now until August 25th at Oaks by the Bay. This year, the city of Panama City is teaming up with Florida Blue to connect mind, body, and soul in a relaxing green space. For more information about this nine-week program, go to panamacity.gov. Parents. Bring your school-aged children out to Daffin Park July 23rd for a day of fun at the City of Panama City Back to School Rollout. <coughs> this year, we're offering games, hot dogs, snow cones, and even free haircuts. Kids can also interact with first responder vehicles in our Touch a Truck event. As an added, extra added bonus, the first 200 kids will receive a free backpack loaded with all the necessities to help them get the school year started right. This event runs from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Don't miss it. We are excited to announce phase one of the MLK Recreation Center revitalization has finally arrived. Beginning in August, demolition crews will begin dismantling the hurricane damage center in preparation for the construction of this new state-of-the-art facility. Over the next few weeks, look for crews to be out at the site erecting fencing, locating, and dis connecting utilities and preparing the site for demolition. As we get closer to demolition day, we will update you on the exact date and time for this process to begin. We appreciate everyone's patience as we continue to navigate this progression. We look forward to the completion of these projects and are excited to see it start. Okay, at this time we'll have audience participation. We have people that have signed up to speak. Uh, you have to give your name and your address. This is for things that are not on the agenda today. And so uh, first speaker will be Derek Thomas. Good morning, Derek Thomas, 1100 West 10th Street. Um, I went to the planning board yesterday. It was pretty interesting. I noticed that they didn't have uh, any kind of three-dimensional maps of, of where they were talking about changing the zoning and putting in very high density uh, housing complexes. But um, if you look at the satellite map, the green spaces that they seem to be targeting to, to put these high density um, developments, um, they're, they're green because nobody has ever built on them. They, they had taxes haven't gone up even when during the 2008 housing boom, everywhere else's taxes went way up. But Parts of the city that weren't developed and haven't been developed up to this point weren't developed because they're in low-lying areas. If you develop them, then the entire neighborhood doesn't drain properly. And um, so I don't know if they can change it somehow, do a, a topographical map uh, on top of the maps that they're showing. But when you're, when you're developing this place, I know we all need housing, but I would, I would encourage you to... To, to drive past the places and, and look at that's a part of the drainage system. Don't don't just develop it. And uh, if you do actually go out and um, get involved in purchasing the uh, old paper mill site, I'd like to suggest maybe an aquarium because there that would be a good draw for people to come in here. That doesn't have to be the only thing you do, but it's apparently huge and they got a 20 million gallon water facility already there, so it might be uh, nice. We're near the water. So anyway, thank you. 
Michelle Clay. Good morning, my name is Michelle Clay, 803 East 10th Street. Good morning, Mayor and City Commissioners. I just wanna start off by saying it's a great time to be in the city of Panama City. Uh, downtown is growing, St. Andrews is growing, and the area around 23rd Street just won't stop growing. This is why I'm so very optimistic about the task of building a better bay, which leads me into the question which was asked by myself at the Monday morning manager meeting. There are areas such as Glenwood and Millville which are not growing at all, specifically the Glenwood area. While there will be housing and affordable housing being built, MLK being rebuilt, the question is why would anyone want to live in that area when it's a food desert, lack of shopping, restaurants, and family fun? My question during the morning manager meeting was, does the city feel like the P3 is effective? And if not, what changes could be made to bring businesses to area where the only thing there to offer is a P3? I did some research and over the past three years, P3s have been on the rise, or the past three decades, excuse me, P3s have been on the rise. But data shows that middle income areas have advantages and businesses are open to P3s, while in low income areas such as Glenwood, Developers, investors don't have the capital to invest, and so P3s lack the sustained enthusiasm by investors who want to build in low-income areas, as many banks will not fund P3s in areas um, such as low-income and areas such as Glenwood. Maybe a reassessment needs to be made for areas that they typically don't work in, and the data shows that it doesn't work. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have uh, Robert Coffey. <clears throat> I'm Rob Coffey, I live on uh, Kings Road, and at this time I have no comment. I signed up erroneously, I apologize. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, sir. Okay, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> He's coming back. Oh, okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Henrietta Burns. Morning. Good morning. Henrietta Barnes, 617 Maple Avenue, Panama City. Um, a few meetings ago, I had a um, problem with transport. I mean, people speeding in our community, 6th, 7th, and Maple Avenue. And um, I would just like to um, thank you all for putting people in place to slow the traffic and thinking about our children running and playing in the streets, if, if they're in the streets. And it has been, progress has been made, and I saw that, and we want you to just continue, and I just want to say thank you all for a job well done. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Wow, Welcome. So nice. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Back That's there in the back. He does the work. We just, yeah. we're here. Uh, need Buell, uh, Janet Harper. Okay, you talk then. Got it. Got All right. I don't need one more. Okay, uh, Gilbert. Good morning, everyone. How you doing? Good morning. Gilbert. Good. Uh, as you guys know who I am, Gilbert Hamadi, Three Godelli, downtown Phantom City on Harrison Avenue. Um, I'm. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that ever since the construction project has started, nobody has come to my restaurant. As you guys know, I'm a lunchtime kind of business. And check with me and see how has the, business, has the construction affected my business in any way. And I just want to give you guys a kind of an update. So what's going on with my I business. I was there yeah. since we Did started. Did you talk to me? Did you tell me to sit down? You were behind me? the counter, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. I don't want to take but, your time. Uh, no, I, I'm not saying you didn't come over. I just somebody sit down and say, hey, Gilbert, how are things going? Uh, things are not going so well. Uh, my business is down 30%. My senior citizens, 90% of them I lost because of the fact they can't find any parking spaces. I know it's an old story. I've spoken to a lot of you about it over the years. Uh, it's kind of hard for my customers to find parking during lunchtime when you have all the people that work on Harrison Avenue parking on Harrison Avenue. This is a problem that we've had for years and years and nothing has been done about it. And I do understand that meter parking is coming, but we're talking about two years down the road, a year and a half, two years down the road. 
The question is, can I survive all that time with my business being down? I need, we need some kind of help to, to enforce the parking downtown, please. I'm begging you guys, I know the DIB is working on something like that. Uh, we need to kind of push it, you know, the, lo the longer we delay it, the longer I'm suffering. And I'm only the only restaurant right now. Once you get down to the next block over, it's gonna get worse, especially for all the other restaurants. So please guys, please, let's do something about the parking downtown. This is a big problem. I know it's a good problem to have per se, but not when you, all the people that work on, on Harrison Avenue park on Harrison Avenue during the daytime. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Gilbert. I would okay. like to add, because Mark, I had a conversation with you about it. You can, you can sit there, and I, I guess he's basically- Well, I have there. spoken to Mark yeah. and Jared and you, Jenna. Yeah. I mean, you've helped me out there tremendously. Uh, well, Jared has helped me out, Mark has helped me out. It just, well, but we, uh, we gotta enforce it somehow. We gotta find told, a way. Truth be told, we haven't been able to help him tremendously. And I did go physically talk to people that own, uh, mm -hmm. own stores or offices. Mm -hmm. not, it's not the stores, I didn't go to stores, but offices there. And they made it sound like it wasn't gonna be a big deal and they were gonna have their people park back there, but then apparently mm -hmm. that's not what's happened. And I know that we are gonna have metered parking and we're gonna do all that, but that is too long. Uh, right. and, and like he said, I mean, then he's gonna have this parking and then the restaurants down there might have a little bit. And they've even got it better because they got behind the Martin Theater. You know what I mean? So it, it's not, nothing is as bad as what you're going through right um, now. Yes, and I don't, I, kn I know that we probably don't have, you know, this, I don't know if it's code enforcement, I don't know who it is, but it's just that stretch, that's all he's asking, is that stretch that right there. Stretch. To just, just enforce the two hour parking for the next 18 months or until we get to that section where it's closed anyway or whatever. We, I think we can do more. I would really appreciate it. I, I mean, anything can. to help me survive. Fine. And don't forget, you got other restaurants coming in, they're going to probably go through the same problem. Sure. Eventually, we'll solve this. But stuff. yours is, is specifically worse than the others because there's really Nothing not any parking for you. Yes, ma'am. We'll address it. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, we, 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 we need to do something. We should have Thank helped you guys you so much. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Sorry you had to come here, Gilbert. Thank you. Thank you for Commissioner for shedding light on that too. Devin? <clears throat> to add to that really quick, there is a parking solution that I gave to Jared and Mark, the premium parking one, that is one that we could execute quickly. Mm -hmm. It's app based and doesn't mm -hmm. require a lot of things. So that would be one Excellent. thing if you yeah. guys want to look at that the easiest, in your time. The easiest, less yeah. complicated thing would be That's correct. Idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. First item, uh, Mayor, on the agenda that I have well, is no. I'm sorry, are there, is there any, uh, with regard to that two hour parking, um, you know, we can look at that with regard to the, uh, the police chief. Uh, we do have the DIB that we lean on for our, as a, a future parking authority for the city, uh, particularly with regard to the downtown and uh, look forward to having a, a, a parking uh, solution with regard to an app that can, uh, can be utilized, but it will, it will be labor intensive to have to ro roll through and ensure two hour parking is, is held too. There's gotta be something we can do, but yeah. yeah. But and know. preferably not DIB yet because it will have to come up with, you know. That's right, there's a, a that, whole comprehensive plan, yeah. that's right. Thank yes, ma'am. First item I have is a first, first reading of ordinance 3082 prohibiting unlicensed commercial use. Okay. <coughs> Walter P. Henry, 614 Main Avenue. I uh, didn't want to come up here today, but uh, what I've heard from my, com from my commissioner, I thank God for what she's done. Uh, when anyone bring me a complaint out of my neighborhood. I don't just hear them, I go where the complaint is. I, I look at it, look at it myself. I look at the problem myself. I know protocol. I did protocol. You know, protocol don't work for you. You go to the source. And the commissioners is our source. <laughs> when anybody that you have hired take care of the city, operate the city. Nobody is man enough or lady enough to call and say, I'm, I'm still investigating, I'm still looking. I went to Jared, talked to him about this problem. He know what I'm talking about. 
talk to, I talked to the city manager about it, where he would know what was going on. I, told, I called Commissioner Brown and talked to him. Now, I don't have a reason to lie. Uh, your employees probably is threatened to, to, tell, to tell the truth, scared they're going to lose their job or somebody going to get mad or with them. Shouldn't be. I work for the city. I know the city. I know your operations. And I know some of you, how you, some folks, how they does. But, but we are, you know, we are out here, we're to help our citizens. We can let water run for months, years. I don't see <coughs> leaks in Panama City. Been leaking for months and years. And when your customer come to you and say, I got a problem with my bill, cause of a sub problem that the city made, there's no way the water bill is not going up and the water going back through the meter. They're gonna make the meter run backwards. Not gonna do that. If you shut off a meter and you don't do it correctly, a check and check before and you cut it on. Air's in that line, pressure's there, that water pushes. If it's galvanized, it'll break something loose in that line. Either you get sand going through the line while you're fixing it, cause a problem. No. Thank you, Mr. Henry. We'll, we'll, we'll address whichever, where you're talking about. We can't do it right now, but thank you. Well, I, I just want to, you, know, you tell me that, Mayor, well, we'll we'll Talk. we'll get the address and 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 figure well, I out. I gave the address to my commissioner. Okay, but I want to know that you know. Do don't thank you, Mr. Henry. Something I I believe you think about. It. Don't tell folks something and don't get back with them and know what's going on. All right. First item is uh, proposed ordinance 3082 prohibiting unlicensed commercial use on boat ramps and city parks. This is an item that uh, came to the city staff's attention after Bay County adopted an ordinance. The problem that Bay County saw was that there was commercial activity going on on public boat ramps. And the commercial activity was so intense that it was hard to find parking for families. It was, uh, there were licenses, I mean, uh, tickets being sold over the internet, people being picked up. Uh, for pontoon boats or other type of commercial activity, and it was crowding out the, uh, the original and intended use of the uh, boat ramps for the public and for the families. And because of that, Bay County adopted an ordinance, and the ordinance prohibits the commercial activity of public boat ramps, uh, ramps that are paid for by the public, used by the public, unless there is a license that is granted by the county. When that occurred, the city staff was curious what would happen in Panama City, and the, the uh, issue migrated toward the city. In particular, Carl Gray Park is a problem area for safety, uh, for parking, for the you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars were spent with federal grant money to protect and to build up the boat ramp and the parking for the use of the public and it is a, it's, it's a problem area. So in light of that, the uh, staff has recommended that the city uh, commission consider adopting a ordinance that's very, very similar to Bay County that would provide consistency in how all boat ramps are operated, whether it's in the unincorporated area or within the city. It would provide, although there is not a provision right now, because this is a first reading, that if the city commission did want to grant license for commercial activities at uh, public parks, like it does with farmers markets, or it does other commercial activities at uh, public spaces, that that certainly can be done. So that this is the proposal, uh, Bay County uh, separated their parks between neighborhood parks, which they just prohibited commercial activity, and then other neighborhood boat ramps, and then other boat ramps which allow uh, activity uh, with a license. That, that has not been accomplished yet. As far as in this ordinance, there is a big blank space, but it is there for discussion, and it is substantially similar to what the uh, 
county has, and this is a first reading if the commission wishes to do so. Well, I, I think that uh, I'm sure we have a people to speak on this issue today. Usually it's not until the second reading. So I think we'll do the first reading and then we'll have ample time for everyone to, to uh, come up and then also the uh, uh, our commissioners can, can voice their opinions. So uh, um, if everyone's okay with that, we'll have first reading and then uh, basically to, to uh, see if there's anything that needs to be tweaked in between. Go Ordin ahead. Ordinance number, first reading of ordinance number 3082, an ordinance of the Board of the City of Panama City, Florida, amending the city's code of ordinance subpart a general ordinances protection of public and private rights prohibit prohibit prohibition for public boat ramps and recreational areas repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict providing for codification providing for severability and providing for an effective date if you want to speak on this issue uh, you can do so at this time come up give your name your address you have three minutes <coughs> Lynn Schneider, um, T36 Wilson Avenue, Panama City, Florida. So I looked over this and I understand that there's an issue with the boat ramps, but my concern has to do more with the park area. Um, when you look at the, the first page letter, there's not a process in there for people to get a, per a permit to do any type of commercial activity. I don't know how often um, you're down in St. Andrews and get to observe activities at the park there, but there's a fitness class that meets there. There's a yoga class that meets there. There's lots of, there's professional photographers doing photo shoots there. That all falls under commercial activity. And if this goes out to law enforcement like this, one of our wonderful Panama City Police Enforcement people are going to be out there and somebody's going to get a ticket for something that I don't think this is what this, the scope of this is. I think that this was to... Um, impact large, more commercial type, not an individual out there teaching 10 people how to run faster. So I have a, a problem with that. And that if it is to regulate that, then we probably ought to have that process in place to get the permit prior to creating this, because then there's gonna be this lag of time about when those classes are gonna be offered, and, and I think that's problematic. Um, it's also the impact with this. What happens to things like the festival, the Gulf Coast Jazz Festival? Um, there's vendors there, is this gonna impact that? Is that something that we've looked at, or? Yeah, it, it would be, I don't want to get, I don't want to. Yeah, but I mean, so I'm not sure if that's something, that's, 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 that's certainly commercial activity. Um, and even the guy that does the horse-drawn carriage at Christmas, you know, he picks his people up there. So, you know, how are we going to resolve that? Um, as far as the, the ramps go, all of the people that we're talking about, those are individuals that came up with a business model based on what the laws were in effect. And at this point, if we do this right now and it becomes effective, they have no recourse. It's too late to find any other place. There, they, there's no place to find, um, get a new, uh, maybe slip a boat someplace, change all of their advertising. I understand this an issue, but I also understand the season's half over. And maybe the thing to do would be to have this come into effect on September 1st or after the Labor Day weekend to give those individuals who have been through the hurricane with us. I mean, these are our neighbors. They've been through a hurricane with us. They've been through pandemic with us. And they're just trying to make a living too. Like I said, I understand it needs to be addressed, but maybe we could do it in a way that's um, a little more kinder, a little more gentle. And I believe that, that that's my comments. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Captain James Spick, 2508 West Knight Street. I'm going to surprise you and tell you that I'm for this. Uh, although Lynn was right, the season doesn't end until November, December now. <clears throat> I'd like to see you go one step further. I'd like for you to uh, make every commercial vessel that's operating in the, in the, in the uh, marinas um, show proof of insurance and buy a license from the city to use the launches. Uh, keep an eye on it. Um, we have a lot of people that are fly-by-nights. They're not um, legitimate guides or legitimate captains. They're operating illegally. And so this way the city could actually know who was there. Give us a sticker to put on our car. Give us a sticker to put on our boat. At least you know who we were, and you could, you could keep track of it that way. And also create some money for the city that could possibly go back into the boat launches and things like that. We don't have enough boat launches. Um, I wish you guys would look at that a little bit more. And, uh, but, but moving us all out or cutting it off, 
I think is a little bit overkill. When you could raise money, and you know, I'm not really big on government getting my money, but uh, you can make this easier on people instead of just saying no more. Okay? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Okay, commissioners. Um, I, think he, I think he wanted. Do you want to come up? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Again, for the record, my name is Rob Coffee. I live on 3305 Kings Road. And yes, I do pay city taxes, county taxes, and proudly. Been very happy about the development efforts that have happened here. My concern is the boat ramp. Yes, we had a storm. We took away a marina. Used to have my boat there. I have a couple boats. I am a licensed captain. Have been since the 1990s. And taking away another avenue until we have marinas fixed, I think that that should be kind of the duration before we try to step out and you know take away any boat launches or anything else. It's uh, it's quite challenging right now to uh, to get around the uh, mayhem so to speak, <laughs> until we have things corrected. Uh, and I obviously, just because it's good for Panama City Beach, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for Panama City. I mean, out there, around the Dolphin Street, and some of that ongoings, and yes, I've run boats out there too, and picked up people there when we were doing such. That's a little different, that was in a neighborhood. St. Andrews over there at that boat ramp, that's not a neighborhood. That's one that the parking has dwindled beyond belief and is more crowded now than ever. And that's different than what the cases were on the beach. Uh, Carl Gray is more of a public parking area than what you have on the beach. So what's good for the beach doesn't necessarily mean it's good for Panama City. And please, uh, if there are any considerations of going forward to a business, I would hope that you would consider it post marina repairs. Give us all an opportunity to have a boat somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? <coughs> okay, commissioners. Uh... <coughs> Mayor, I guess I could. I guess I could lead off. <laughs> okay. This morning. <coughs> uh, the first time I got wind of this was uh, Friday evening when I received a text from a, uh, a citizen that owns a little business in uh, St. Andrews area. And uh, it would affect him if it was passed as it is. Uh, and, and so I asked him, I said, well, do you have a business license? You know, yeah, for his business he does. And so then I got to reading, I've read this, I think I've read this thing 25 times. Uh, and it's even a little confusing to me, and I like what the last gentleman said. Uh, you know, we, what's good for one area may not be good for another area. Now, that's hard to decipher, but I do believe that with all of my heart. And yeah, I may be wrong, but from what I've received in just the past 24, 48 hours, I, my phone been, has been blowing up since Sunday. I don't know why they chose to call me but they chose a lot of these boat captains called me. And there's an organization called Panama City Fishing Guide Association uh, that brings approximately 5,000 people into St. Andrew's area. Now, I can't tell you where they come from, if it's the beach or, or why they're bringing them here or if they're boarding there and going to Shell Island. But if they're not paying taxes and don't have a license, then that needs, that's something that needs to be addressed. You know, you know, you, it's it's not a freebie. You know, businesses are having to pay taxes. You own a restaurant, you got to pay. And so, uh, and 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 one of these gentlemen that called me said, and he said, Billy, he said I had my boat at the City Marina before Hurricane Michael, and now I, it's, I have nowhere to put my boat. You know, so I, I I've got questions with that, and and I know there's a lot of people that are that understand things more than I do, and I'm, I'm not a boater that has a business down there. But, but I know when we bring people across to St. Andrews, whether they get out for an hour or two hours or whatever, they're gonna eat in restaurants. 
they might go into a store and buy something, and, and I've, there's a ripple effect. But if we've got a problem with parking, a problem with Carl Gray Park, with, uh, where our local citizens cannot use the public park, then we've got a problem. We've got to address that. How do we do that? I don't know. I don't have an answer. But I'm not prepared. I'm glad we're not voting on it today because it is confusing to me. And I hope what I've said has made a little bit of sense because I'm not an authority on this. I, I'm not. I don't pretend to be. You know, uh, it's not music related. <laughs> I, I always have, to have a little humor once in a while. But I have, I have owned boats in the past, uh, but never a commercial boat, just one that we kept at the house. So, Mayor, you, you're a voter. You, you vote more than anybody in this town on this commission, probably, and uh, you may have more input than, I like what Mr. Pick said too, you know. Uh, that, so, I just, I just wanna slow down and, uh, it's the first reading, and the first reading is simply to discuss, and so, I respect that, and our staff respects that, and that's why we're here. So we're not prepared to vote. We may not be prepared to vote at the next meeting. So if anyone else from the commission would like to speak up, I would love to hear your thoughts on this next. subject matter. Thank you. Anyone Josh, you want to go next? Go ahead. Yeah. So um, a couple things that are just for defining, I would like to see like a defined timeline for start. I mean, we are mid-season, so that's one. Um, but the second thing, a couple things that popped up as I was doing the review, and um, uh, we had a little bit of time to talk about this yesterday, was currently right now we cannot extend an occupational license to a business that does not have a physical location. I'd like us to see how we can address that because that's gonna be the biggest hurdle in creating some type of, of, of permitting process. Mm -hmm. And I think to the point of, but first of all, boating captains, we want you in St. Andrews. Absolutely. So we, we, we love the tourism that you bring. Um, we wanna see you operate. What we're trying to do with, and I think what staff has attempted to do here is try to create some type of parameters so that we can regulate it. Um, so that ultimately we don't have 15 jet ski operators at Carl Gray Park that you know that now no local residents can can enjoy the park. So there does have to be some kind of parameters, and that's one of the things I'd like to see. Like, how many permits will we issue? That was one of the things I noticed with the beach, um, the the beach particular ordinance. There is a set number of permits to each public area. Um, so like, how many is that? Those kind of it's more or less. I do think it's a good thing to regulate unlicensed activity, unlicensed commercial activity. I don't think that's a bad thing, um, but we do have to provide a good, clear process to whatever that licensing component is, so that obviously the, the people that are operating their businesses, they have a mechanism to which they can go through. Um, it's reasonable, it's fair, um, it's a good governmental process so that they can continue to operate and do so in a manner that does not impede the general public's use of public spaces. So that's kind of my thought. So I do think this one as it reads today is, is too far reaching. And I think if we provide that mechanism for um, permitting, um, I think that would lessen a lot of the tension here and is really, I think, more, and I don't know how everybody else's concerns are, that's really my biggest concern, is making sure that we've got a way to um, get these guys licenses, you know, provide that proof of insurance. I think that's a great, that's a great point. Um, you know, those kind of things. Not that it's a $2,000 a year permit or something like that. I mean, it's something that allows us to make sure that we can regulated appropriately. Because what did happen and what is pushing this towards the front is as soon as Bay County, as soon as the beach tightened up on their ordinance, it just pushed everybody across the bridge. And a lot of you guys have been operating for years, but we have a lot of new operators too. And so we're trying to find a way that we can manage that better. Um, so that's my comments. Well, I agree with Josh that I am so grateful and thankful uh, for all the charter boats. Uh, kayaking, the yogas at parks, the running, fitness, I mean, the more the merrier. 
um, that that's the point as we didn't want a sleepy town anymore and that we wanted all this activity going so um, I just had a couple things first of all this is really vague there was to your point there's there's we don't we don't know what the application process is don't know what the permit fees are um, there's uh, there was no list of the parks like it just said neighborhood and commercial and I agree I don't remember exactly who it was who said in my mind of all of our boat ramps or our marina facility any kind of water access we have the only one that would qualify as a neighborhood to me would probably be Bob George and Millville um, and after talking to some of these guys and listening to what they have to say I think that uh, personally I think we need to treat it like we have everything else that pops up that we're really not sure what to do and like with the you know the bar situation and all that when all that came around and we were like oh we're gonna close everything at two and then what we did is we just stopped and we said let's meet with the people who care about it who are licensed and who are insured and let's staff get with them and come up with a good ordinance that fits uh, and supports uh, what we do want which is all of I do I do want all this commerce going on um, the Carl Gray parking situation to me feels like uh, a little bit of a, an excuse because a lot of this season during this time you can park at Gulf Coast you can park I mean it, you know I understand having to, I like the idea like Josh I like the idea of having a permit uh, not at some cost you know great cost but just something so that staff you know code enforcement the police like everybody knows that they're allowed to be there um, but not a big not a whole bunch of policy and a whole bunch of of things or that there's overkill of it right like you were talking about the jet ski thing I mean, that'd be mm -hmm. kind of crazy right yeah. if there was all that going on um, we talked about the Panama City Marina um, and actually when the marina was developed and it was bonded on cigarette tax it was for commercial use so uh, we do want it for our people but we need to consider that it was supposed to be a revenue generator and that is one of the one of the ways that it was and I think it was 1958 um, so I guess what I just don't feel like we're quite um, I don't feel like we're even close to being ready in this ordinance and I would much rather staff me that that's what I'd like to do is I, I don't think it just needs to be here in two weeks I'd like to just say hey let's knock this off and let staff go in and, and vet the stuff out with all these guys that have been here for a long time and and girls or whoever's working at these things I mean Brad from Sunjammers made a really good point when he was like, I mean, here they've been there forever and they use the launch as a test driving, their kayaks, you know? So, you know, and then one of the conversations was, well, they're, they're doing their commerce at their building. And it's like, well, these people are doing online. I mean, there's, this ordinance doesn't, doesn't cover anything. It doesn't, it, it's just, it actually will think, I think will make things a lot more cloudy. So I would say that we just, we put this to the side until so we can get with all these guys and let you know figure out how we're gonna the best way to do it okay i see your face down there why brown go ahead this no i mean if you're, seriously it's maybe it's i'm missing commissioner time go okay. ahead right. <laughs> well mr mayor i'm not a fisherman i'm not even a boater you work too much <laughs> yes yeah. nah, that's what i love helping people and i do look out for them but my experience with a coming on a boat as a fisherman when I was real small in Blountstown, Florida. My father took me fishing. I ate all the, the cheese and bait and then I went to sleep. <laughs> and the next act, the incident that I had, I was on working at the Cabana Diner and a guy jumped off a boat and ran me. That's the fastest I've ever ran in my life. So with me, I'm here to say that I listen to the people, I listen to the citizens, and I listen to to everyone that's come up, I will decide what I feel to do after I listen to the citizens and listen to the people. I'll wait on them to give me a call. Okay. I, I guess uh, you want to go before me or should I go with you? Yes, you, can, yes, you, can, you can finish up. Um, one of the things that, that uh, I've always been an advocate of, I don't want private uh, industry competing with government. And so, you know, the government owns these boat ramps. And uh, so if we've got people that are like Scotty's over there across on the other side of 98, he rents out all these different things and 
And so he's paying property taxes, so he's paying the rent for the people to operate on the other side of the street at Carl Gray. So they can rent it out cheaper and put money in their pocket because Scotty's helping them out. Well, it's just not right. So, I mean, that's one of the situations that we've got here. We've got all these businesses over there that have, that have camped out on our, uh, on our city boat ramps because, first of all, they can't do it at the county anymore. So, yes, yeah, something has to be addressed now. As far as the licensing, uh, some of the stuff that Pick said was uh, very uh, right on, spot on. You know, I mean, first of all, uh, if we do get to a point that there's some tweaking there, with uh, licensing and stuff, we really need to know who these people are and and uh, and what uh, you know their operations and 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 knowing that they are licensed captains and and uh, lack of a better word, jack legs, you know, other than because uh, it it the situation for us is how do we provide. Uh, like in Brad's situation over there. Now, if he has people coming up, he's a brick and mortar store. He gets his uh, people come in, they want to test a kayak behind his place. That's great. He's paying property taxes. And, uh, you know, I, but somebody else that's, that's running him someplace else and not paying any property tax and not paying anything in uh, and not licensed uh, is competing with him, you know? Well, that's, I agree. That's and at the that, that's 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 totally nuts. So uh, we have to, uh, in looking at this this whole situation, figure out if there is a way. For example, some of the people that just use that are paying rent, some of the captains are paying rent at different marinas now for their boats. They're charging X. Other guys are just putting in at St. Andrews, leaving their boat and their trailer there all day, taking up parking, they're not paying X. Maybe they go over to Watson Landing. Load your people over there at Watson Landing, but God forbid I gotta pay rent at Watson Landing. Well, you know, gas doubled. <laughs> so uh, it, maybe it's an extra 50 bucks that you gotta charge for, for the uh, fishing excursion, but then again, you're, you're giving money to private business to, to, to store your boat. So, so there's probably other ways. I mean, and everybody wants to find the most economical way to run their business, mm -hmm. but it can't be on the backs of everybody else. Yeah. You know? I mean... Uh, I don't think any of us are disagreeing with that, are we? Yeah. yeah I, we I, all agree that so, regulation... So, and, so, yeah. so let's figure out how we, you know have private industry, everybody's treated fairly, and uh, if it takes, a, uh, you know, some licensing or whatever, some tweaking, then we'll look at it. General? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come, come up here, we can't, we can't hear you, brother. Mayor, I want to make a say, oh. I just received a text from a person watching online, and it might be me It was clicking my pen, and I apologize, but they say it's affecting the volume of the sound, so I just basically. it. Oh, I don't know. Go that. ahead. It's probably uh, me. Give your, yeah. give your name and address. Tim Hanna, 1508 Lake Avenue. Okay. And I have an issue with what you said there, Mayor. Okay. About government and private entities competing with each other. Y'all own a marina there. You guys sell ice there, right? Uh -huh. There's a convenience store right on Beck Avenue. Sells ice. Is that is that not what we're talking about here? Well, it's, that's that's sense? that's kind of a stretch. It, that's a stretch. Yeah, it's, well, it's convenience for people. It's yeah, convenience. They, once you get your boat in the water, I mean, I don't want to get an argument with you. We don't have time for that. But once you get your boat in the water, and you you got your gas, or you're getting gas or whatever. And you go, oh, damn, I forgot my ice. Put your boats in the water. So we got ice. You know, I mean, well, so that, that's a different your, thing. Your, your gas at your marina is a dollar and something less. And I'm not saying raise the price, by all <laughs> means I use the marina. But the gas at the marina there is cheaper than any other marina in Bay County, if, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So government competing with private, your, your whole logic of 
us not paying a slip fee at Panama City Marina, Marina and that somehow that's not fair because someone does pay a slip fee or Brad Stevens pays property tax so he can use whatever he wants. I pay property tax too on a business and my home. And living on the water is a lot of property tax. Right. I understand. And, uh, so to take my boat from Lake Avenue over to Panama City Marina or the, the St. Andrew Marina and pick up three people that are going to eat in all those restaurants, I, I don't see how that's competing your, your point there, Mr. Well, you're, you're a unique yeah. situation. I mean, for you, it's not because you are yeah, paying property tax. Ramp, but there are people that do. And yeah. frankly, you, I, I hear you guys talking about all this chaos at these boat ramps. Maybe Carl Gray, I don't go there. I'm at St. Andrew almost every day. Mm -hmm. I drove there Saturday. There's, almost, there's no one on the boat ramp. The, the courtesy dock is empty. There's mm -hmm. parking spaces everywhere. This is on Saturday after the 4th of July, 4th of July weekend even. I was down there. It wasn't this chaos. So to start, I think, you know, making a problem when there's not a problem, it's, it seems like that's what's happening, that, that we're, you're trying to. I wish there wasn't a problem, because, but there is. What, what is the problem? I, well, that's kind of. We can, we can, well, the general's going to address that. Address gonna that. Have sure, abs problem. absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. your comments. trying to say is that we don't want to subsidize right the cost or exactly well that's well doing. that's and that's what that's same thing but go ahead yeah so uh, you know the the problem was manifest and made light of uh, during or subsequent to the county taking their action and people are moving around uh, people have moved over to in particular call gray park it started with uh, a single vendor and then it's uh, multiplied to multiple vendors. I think the, uh, when we define, if we want to define the problem, it goes to what is our philosophy? What is our philosophy with regard to the use of not government owned, but citizen owned property? The citizens of Panama City have invested millions of dollars into the boat ramps and are going to continue to do that. In fact, this, this commission has task the city manager and my office and staff to go and expand the number of boat ramps and la launching capability. The objective is to have 10 across the city. We want to have access to the bay. Uh, we want to have access uh, to the uh, water activities. Uh, we want to have thriving businesses. One of the tenants, the four tenants that we have for the city of Panama City and our recovery efforts to be the premier city in, Panama, in the panhandle is our economy. We want thriving, legitimate, authorized businesses to, to take place. There are a number of um, individual uh, investors that have bought waterfront property, have sunk millions of dollars into improving those waterfront properties with dock cap capabilities. They pay taxes on that property, ad valorem taxes, they pay business license, they pay merchant fee. Uh, they pay a sales tax, and all of that helps to keep this city thriving. Um, when we have businesses that are unlicensed or are uh, taking advantage of citizen-owned property, like boat ramps, to have private business, it is in direct competition with those established businesses that have invested in those, in this case, the waterfront properties. Uh, to the point that the mayor made, uh, using exactly Carl Gray Park as an example, uh, to have a operator that is uh, renting pontoon boats or wave runners or other uh, kayaks or sailboats, whatever, uh, and pays zero to the citizens of Panama City for the use of that facility, pays zero sales tax, pays zero merchant fee tax, pays zero ad valorem tax, and yet his competitor on the other side of 98 next to the Port Panama City has invested in that property, is paying for the property tax and paying the merchant fee. Why should the unlicensed, unregulated activity at Call Gray Park be advantaged over that which we want, thriving, stable businesses in the community? I think it gets cloudy when we start talking about um, 
uh, the fact that uh, when I talk to some of, the, some of those businesses and they say, well, they don't want to, um, uh, that they don't want to go to other locations, like for example, I'm not, um, another location that's on the waterfront that has docking capability, they don't want to go there because they don't want to pay rent to that owner to use their dock. But yet they don't want to pay rent to the citizens of Panama City for using their boat ramp. I think that's just fundamentally wrong. I think it's imperative that we uh, create a balanced and equitable playing field for competition of business to take place. And when it's being subsidized, essentially subsidizing these uh, businesses that are taking place uh, on public property, uh, I think that's fundamentally uh, unhealthy to a, an economy that we're striving for. I think philosophically the objective of this commission is to drive down ad valorem the property tax for every person that owns property in the city of Panama City. That has been a stated objective repeatedly by this commission. In order to do that, the most equitable taxation policy is a consumption tax. It is based on merchant fee, it's based on sales tax, it's based on the consumption of an item. It, you choose to consume that item, you pay a tax to that. If you choose not to consume that item, you're not paying any tax, so you're not harmed. But the only way to drive down ad valorem and property tax is to have a more equitable licensing and taxation methodology, which is merchant fee. We have a number of businesses that are taking place inside the city of Panama City that are not remitting their merchant fee. They may be paying sales tax, but they're not doing their merchant fee. They may even be collecting it from the citizens, but not dispersing it to the city. We have, um, we have a thriving, industry here in our community. We are, uh, one project in, projection is that uh, there's been over a billion dollars worth of sales taking place inside the city limits of Panama City in the last year. That's significant. If the city is going to continue to prosper and indeed provide the services that our citizens not only expect but absolutely deserve, it takes revenue. And the revenue, in my estimation, should not be on the backs of the property owners. It should be on the consumption methodology. The objective of today's activity to have this first reading was to indeed absolutely say what our position is relative to licensed businesses operating in the city of Panama City and what we say against unlicensed businesses in the city of Panama City. I absolutely have no issues with creating a, uh, um, a uh, methodology, a licensing, a permitting, whatever it needs to be, but it needs to be equitable because otherwise we're creating a disadvantage to those that are investing tons of money into, in this case, in this scenario, waterfront property. Uh, and uh, I can envision at a park, for example, for example, uh, in a uh, beach drive, the city has leased beach drive uh, property from Mr. Kingston. If we allow unlicensed activity to take place at that space, all of those businesses along Beach Drive that have invested money into that activity is going to be disadvantaged. I mean, when you go and spend $20,000 to go and lease property and build a ramp and uh, other things that you have to do, put in some parking, and then you've got somebody that's competing right next door to you on a city-owned property for a $200 permit? Really? Is that, are we creating a, a fair and equitable uh, environment for business to thrive? I would say no. I think we've got to look at this uh, more realistically. I like what Mr. Pick said. I think absol absolutely we want more uh, charter vessels, but there's a cost to that. There's a cost for having that boat ramp there. There's a cost for having that floating dock there. There's a cost for maintaining safety. There's a cost to, there's an, actually an indirect cost to all of those businesses in over in St. Andrews because now all of these people are being picked up at the St. Andrews Pier or at the boat ramp. And guess what? Their vehicles are staying there in the parking lots for the next six to eight hours as they're out on a fishing excursion. And I'm glad they're on the fishing excursion, but there's zero dollars coming to the city of Panama City from that retail activity. And yet, the secondary impact to all of those businesses in St. Andrew is less available parking 
for the businesses that thrive on rotation of individuals coming through and parking there. You want to have uh, parking turn frequently. That means you have more customers coming into restaurants and to the kayak places and to other shops there as opposed to having to find further and further places to park. One of those, and since we're talking about St. Andrews, obviously one of the objectives is to create a parking garage. This is exactly why we need to do this. In a concierge service where all of, if we have a parking garage, for example, behind Hunts on that city owned property, we could have a parking garage there. We could have all of the charter boat customers park there because they're gonna park there all day while they're out fishing and leave the marina parking and the Bayview parking and the closer end parking for the restaurants and the other shops to have rotation of customers. It's just a fundamental philosophy conversation and the objective to, of today was to start that dialogue. I absolutely respect all of our charter uh, boat captains. Um, I want them to thrive. I want to be, uh, as we know, uh, a much more thriving uh, working marina there at St. Andrews. Um, but what we have created, what has been created, not that we created, what has been created is a unlevel playing field for legitimate businesses to operate inside the city of limits of Panama City by allowing subsidization of unlicensed, unpermitted activity at public spaces. That's a philosophical conversation. So maybe uh, we have uh, a meeting similar to we did when we were doing the alcohol ordinance. Absolutely. And invite uh, uh, the, the people that, that it affects because, you know, you have to have an appointment to catch a red snapper now. What is it? It ends the August 17th. Mm -hmm. So it has forced a lot more pressure for people that want to fish, fishing in the bays. Because you can only fish out in the Gulf and keep stuff right. with what you have to pay for such a limited period of time. So I understand all that. I personally understand all that. So let's let's maybe set up a time sure. over this next two week period where we invite Ms. Tana, some of the other gentlemen that, the, that can come and, and, and voice their opinions about what we need to do and we could tweak some stuff and, and try to, try to uh, get closer to a solution. Because yeah. obviously we need, we need one. It, it may be difficult in the next two weeks because we have a number of performing arts events that are taking place and workshops that are taking place, but I will skip before we, well, when we go when, when we can do it. Yeah. So and, nothing's going to pass. Advertise it and put it out there so everybody that wants to participate in the workshop can do that. Uh, we want to have a well-crafted ordinance that yep. meets the needs. I absolutely agree what takes place at the beach does not mean it needs to take place here at the city of Panama City. But what we do want here in the city of Panama City is an equal playing field for uh, legitimate businesses to operate and not be undermined by unlicensed, unregulated activities. And number two, we want to find a way to drive down ad valorem so that Mr. Hanna, a good friend of mine, doesn't have to continue to pay high property taxes. Very good. I know everybody's done with this, but I just, I feel like everything that was talked about, there's just so much going on and different things. I just want to say that the boat captains, the people I've talked to, they are not also not against regulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it kind of sounds like we, you know, it's like a free for all out there. These these guys are not against that either. Um, I don't I, I don't necessarily agree with everything. I do agree, like the consumption tax and the merchant tax. I mean, I think I don't even think they'll disagree mm -hmm. with that. What I'm confused about is you've got like it, this whole thing includes like yoga and downtown, you know, by, you know, destination Panama City and all that, like, at the same time, we're, to me, my philosophy is that we're supposed to be creating a place where all businesses thrive, whether you've got the money to build a dock and have waterfront property, or you have another means of doing it by getting a permit, you know, or whatever it is to use those mm -hmm. boat ramps and pay your merchant fee or whatever. It's the same thing. That's like saying, the people who we're promoting, Sunset Yoga, that's like saying, well, they don't have a brick and mortar store, so we, we don't, you know, I don't know if it's fair and equitable for them either to have, there is so much involved in this. I'd almost like to see the boat ramps and the marinas addressed by themselves and then maybe the green space and the park, because it's like, these are two, they're like two totally they different are. things going on mm -hmm. and we, it's clear to see, listening to them and listening to, to you guys talk and us talk, that there's just there's so much stuff that's not defined on 
if you have brick and mortar, you know, if you have the, you know, if you live in the city of Panama City, you know, is there a discount for you because you're already paying tax? I mean, you know, there's just so much going on here that I think we just, uh, maybe if we, I would like to just see the marinas and the boat ramps be addressed so we can keep that nice and clean. And then if we have a, and that includes kayaking, jet skiing, you know, all the things that are, are there, but uh, you know, I don't know. There's just a lot, a lot going on there. I don't know if everybody agrees or disagrees with that, but I think that'd be the best way. To that, that's why we have first readings. So yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you, very valid point. James, you got one minute. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> and to add while James is coming up, I, I don't think this is a is a hard thing to no, resolve. No. I, I think paid parking one mm -hmm. resolves a lot of the mm -hmm. a lot of the parking issues that we've got. It allows us to push people to certain areas to park for longer term, short term, up close. Mm -hmm. Same right. thing. Um, um, you know, that was being shared earlier. And I think the, you know, regulation through a permitting process allows it to pay, sure. you know, yeah. that. I, no I don't think this has to be like some kind of like major. crazy, major, yeah. major thing. But. I would like to add before James talks though, I, right before you said it, I'd written it down on my paper about the parking garage. I mean, if my goal is that sun jammers and retail and all them are hustling and bustling and these guys are too. If we've got a parking problem, who is that on? The businesses can't create it. The charter guys can't create it. If we want to, if we want St. Andrews, we want all the retail. We want all that. We yep. need to get on a parking garage. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We're creating the environment for retail. We got to yeah, create the parking. It. That's right. Okay. Yeah. No, totally agree with you. So go ahead. Um, after listening to you, I, I have a couple of points. Um, when you go to look at fees, you may or may not know, but. The state of Florida charges us $205 a year for a four-person license and $405 a year for a six-person license. The Coast Guard charges us $95 every five years for our license. So I, I don't want y'all to get all the way out of hand with these things. It's Texas, they charge $1,200. Well, they charge $1,200 a year in Texas for a guide license. So, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be like that. Well, that's Everything's why the workshop big in is Texas. necessary because yeah. so, we don't know any, I don't know any of that. Um, two, two other things real quick. Uh, we think that there's probably a, a lot of people that have gotten run off the beach that are launching at Carl Gray and picking up in St. Andrews. Mm -hmm. So that's something that might be right. wanna, uh, you might want to look at. And um, the last thing, I, this is probably more my favorite than anything else, is I've lived in my house for 30 years and paid city taxes for 30 years. I rent uh, a boat slip from a gentleman who pays city taxes down on Lake Huntington. And uh, I think my fee should be less yeah, than, than somebody who lives on the beach, that's who right. operates their business on the beach, because they're not paying taxes. I agree with that 100%. Right. And uh, those are just things that I would put in there. Uh, got no problem with paying you guys some money every year. Uh, that's, nobody, nobody. All right, if anybody else want to come up, we'll, we'll, we already, uh, oh, we opened it back up, so. Uh, Mr. Mayor, why he's coming up? Now, like I said, I'm not a fisherman. And I'm not a boater, but I am a boating member of all this edifice, and I would like people to send me an email and let me know what you think. Okay. I'm not a resident of uh, Panama name, City. Name and address. Okay. Brian Sullivan, 602 Tammy Street, Lynn Haven, Florida. Uh, I actually had a slip downtown Panama City. Yeah. Um, it got destroyed. A lot of us actually had slips down there. I'm actually fishing, dolphin tours. Uh, I actually don't pay taxes on the fishing because Florida law states that we do not charge taxes on fishing fee. But dolphin, ta uh, dolphin tours, I have to pay taxes on that. So I actually have to sit there and just decipher each one that I do. I have to actually sit there. And, and since we do not have the city marina uh, and we do not have our slip, it actually takes me about four hours longer a day hey, getting ready than I, than I normally would if I had a slip. You know, so um, it's not fair to be punished for there's no marinas in Panama City. Um, if we had slips, we would all be renting. I'm actually on a waiting list at St. Andrews. You know, um, if Panama City came back, We'd be down there. So I just wanted to we address will be that. Back. <laughs> All right. Th thank you, sir. Come on up. There's so many different points. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Russell Paz or two or two Mill Creek Drive, Pine Bluff City, Florida. I also have rental property in Pine Bluff City, so I pay taxes. Um, I've I've been a licensed captain since 1995. I, my parents or my grandparents kept their boat at the City Marina. I kept my boat at the City Marina until Hurricane Michael. I would like the opportunity to rent another slip from either the City Marina or St. Andrews Marina. How do I go about doing that? Yeah, great question. I don't know. Good question. Well, well, there are, uh, the only marina that we have that's operating is St. Andrews. There is a waiting list, and you're happy to put your name on the waiting list for that as spaces right. become available, but that is where we are right now. But um, there are slips there. There are boats there operating. Right. That's correct. Right. That's correct. So. It's just a waiting list. So. They're it, already rented. How do you go about, I mean, discrimination? I mean, how do you get, how do you get a slip? How do other people get a slip when we had a slip? before Hurricane Michael. They had slips too, sir. Right. They were over there in St. Right. Andrews. So they were already there, I think. Why were we not? That's right. Why did we not have the opportunity? And there are people that have slips there now that didn't have a slip in St. Andrews before the hurricane. I must have just rented it. Yeah. It was first that, come, first served. But I would Maybe. like the opportunity to have a slip. Absolutely. And just be happy to put your name on the list for that, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then I do note that there are other marinas that are available uh, in the community that are commercial. Uh, that other operators have, and they're happy to uh, lease those as well. Yep. Okay, so I think we all agree it, it needs some. Yeah. Work so we'll, and we'll it, it may not be at the next meeting. So you know so we're, we're, we'll we'll get it addressed and and we'll get in touch with uh, we'll put a notice out when we have a, a meeting like we did for the off floor mm -hmm. deal sure. and and uh, in the meantime th I thank everyone for their for their comments. That's why we're here. Uh, we want to get everybody's opinion, and none of us are experts even though sometimes we act like it. Yeah. But Mr. Mayor, uh, with your permission and that of the commission, uh, I would ask that we uh, not put this on the agenda for the 26th right. and instead to allow time for a workshop to take place, uh, would advocate that this be put on for consideration uh, on the 9th of August. Okay, can I get a motion, Josh, for that? I'll make a motion. All right. Yep, go ahead. All right, we got a motion to have a second. Okay, motion and second, and that is that this, we will have a workshop in between now and August 9th, and it's not gonna be on the next commission meeting, so anyone that's not here today that wanted to come here today but couldn't come here today, tell them it's not gonna be voted on in the next meeting. Um, how do we get that information to them? Like maybe the organization that Billy was talking about? Is that, is that the largest? That's part of them. We'll put, it on the, we'll put it on the city website and we will get notices right. out. That's Caitlin's job. Mm -hmm. Just like we notice everything. Yeah. She'll Every get it out. Okay. Yeah. I'll post too. I'll make sure. Um, for those of you, I'll, I would follow the Pembroke City Facebook page. Would, all, would also do it. Yep. Um, that's probably better sure. suited for If all you guys could give us your phone numbers, it, Jan, I think that's a great big, idea, big Billy. Before yeah. you before yeah. you go today, make sure that Jan's got your number. We'll, we'll personally yeah. call people because we know this affects your livelihood. We'll go out of our way to make sure that you have the opportunity. Okay, that's what we need to do. Yep. Uh, good, good so we need, we, need, we need to vote on that. We have a first and second. Yes, for the for the workshop. And I, We've got a motion and second uh, for, any, for rescheduling it to the second. Rescheduling to August 9th and then a workshop in between. That's we have a motion and second. Any other discussion? If we're not prepared by the ninth, then we need to be honest about that. And you know, so we, that's the goal, though. That's correct. Okay. That's, that's a good point. Okay. Call the roll. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Rader. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligus. Yes. Mayor Bernicki. Yes, ma'am. Motion passes five zero. Next item, Commission, is uh, requested approval of First Amendment to the Southern Group of Florida Agreement. Southern Group is a lobbyist firm that Panama City and Bay County have used for a few years, especially in light of post-storm recovery issues. They assist us with legislation with the Florida House and the Florida Senate and the Governor's Office. They've been very successful. The city has been uh, with its uh, representatives' assistance, and the request is to approve an amendment increasing the fee from 6000 a month to 7500 Motion on 7B. Yes, I'd like to move approval. Second this the motion, Mayor. Good investment. Second the motion, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Any uh, discussion? Call the roll. 
Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. Consent agenda has two items if you want to address either one of those separately. Otherwise, uh, hear a motion on 8A and 8B. Motion to approve, Mayor. Second his motion. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. General? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, draw your attention to item 9A, which is the consideration of the Community Development Block Grant. Uh, Grant Disaster Recovery, CDBGDR, Hazard Mitigation Grant Program Match Budget Amendment Resolution, number 20220712.1 for the 13 lift station projects. This is for phase one. As background information, on February 9th, 2022, the City of Panama City was awarded the CDBGDR Hazard Mitigation Grant Program Match in the amount of $6,625,626 for the lift stations projects. Uh, the budget amendment is for the non-federal local 25% cost share of phase one, which is the design for the two-phase project in the amount of $656,603. Uh, it's my recommendation that we uh, move forward and do this budget, budget resolution. And before doing so, I do want to thank uh, publicly uh, Governor DeSantis and our Director Eagle uh, for finding ways to help this community recover. Uh, in awarding the matching grant. This is a uh, huge benefit to the citizens of Panama City. Okay, you'll hear a motion on 9A. I'll move a motion. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. I don't have. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We have a budget right. yes. resolution to read. Resolution number 20220712.1, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget for the non-federal local 25% share cost of phase one design part of a two-phase project for 13 lift stations. Item 9B is uh, similar. It's the consideration for the CDBGDR hazard mitigation grant match budget amendment resolution number 20220712.2. For the fire stations number one, two, and six, for the wind retrofit, retrofit and the generator, uh, for each of those locations. Uh, and on December 16th, 2021, the City of Panama City was awarded the CDBGDR hazard mitigation grant in the amount up to $167,248 for fire stations one, two, and six, for the wind retrofit and the generators. Uh, the budget amendment is for the non-federal local 25% cost share in the amount of $159,838.93. With that, it's my recommendation we move forward and adopt the uh, resolution. Motion on the resolution. Motion to approve, Mayor. Second. Second the motion. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5-0. Commission has adopted resolution 20220712.2, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 2122 budget for the non federal local 25% share cost of the fire stations 1, 2, and 6 wind retrofit and generator project. Item 9C is consideration to approve a budget amendment resolution 20220712.4 to deposit funds received from the Presser Research Group Incorporated in the amount of $3,502.91. As background information, the City of Panama City Police Department uh, maintains a memorandum of understanding with the Presser Research Incorporated in regards to the company's scientific study of seatbelt enforcement under contract with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And per the MOU, the Panama City Police Department is entitled to grant funds distributed by Presser Research uh, the duties required by the police department fall under the normal operating procedures during an officer's patrol and have required no additional expenditure of manpower. Therefore, we're, uh, the city is requesting uh, the grant funding account for the operating expenses to be used uh, at a later date in the appropriate project as governed by the MOU and determined by the police department. With that, it's a recommendation that we accept the budget resolution uh, from the Purser Research Group in the amount of $3,502.91. Motion on 9C. 
Motion to approve, ma'am. Second to motion. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Commission has adopted resolution 20 a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21 22 budget for the acceptance of a memorandum of understanding in the amount of 3502 for participation in scientific studies seat belt enforcement with presser research under contract with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Funds will be spent later on appropriate projects as governed by the MOU. Item 9D is consideration to approve the budget amendment resolution 2022071.2.5 to utilize state forfeiture funds to purchase medical response accessories for one of the Panama City Police Department's ATVs in the amount of $3,335. In his background, this request is to transfer state forfeiture funds to equip one of our Panama City Police Department's ATVs with a rescue skid and storage tray that are specific to medical emergency response. These items will follow, allow the officers to be prepared to provide immediate medical treatment and transportation in the field where EMS may not be readily available or delayed. With that, it's a recommendation we approve the resolution in the amount of $3,335. Motion on 9D. I'll move a motion. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Yes, Commissioner. Mayor. Uh, would one ATV would be enough to cover the whole area we're, we're kind of growing that capability uh, right now we as you know this uh, we're very grateful to the Commission in approving the acquisition of uh, I think we have four ATVs now uh, that we've acquired one of these will be dedicated for the ability to have medical transport and that's what this would would do oh, okay. uh, and and mr. Commissioner uh, mr. Brown the uh, uh, you know as we increase our ATV fleet which I anticipate we will, uh, that we will continue to assess how many more of these equipped uh, ATVs for medical response that we would need. I guess when I read this, I was have that on my mind if uh, we have two accidents or two something that we may need more than one. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. General, can I ask Brandy a question? Brandy, do we, when we have these budget amendments, is there a limit that we have to vote on? I mean, I know this is like $3,000. The other one was 3000 is it? Uh, commission has adopted resolution 2022-0712.5, a resolution providing for the amendment of approved fiscal year 21-22 budget for approval to use state forfeiture funds to purchase medical response accessories for a police department ATV in the amount of $3,000. $3,335. Yes. Okay. Follow-up question, I think. Yeah, could we group these smaller ones together instead of having to do each one of them individually? Yeah, I mean, I think on the smaller ones, I think that's where, you know, the six figures and above, something like that. Right. To the mayor's point, we still got to read the still resolution. Still the resolution. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to expedite, but that's, yeah. Yeah. you know, government like doesn't, government never yeah, expedites. State law. Change, we could change okay. our charter. <laughs> that's a state law, sir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, item 9E, uh, consideration to approve a budget amendment, amendment and resolution number 2022071.2.6 for the IDC Commerce Road and the Blackwater Road uh, Capital Projects uh, for accounting purposes. As you know, this board uh, approved both of those road projects. Uh, this budget resolution would be in the amount of $3,244,790. Your motion on 9E. Make, make a motion, Mayor, for the approval. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion, motion passes 5-0. 
Commission has adopted Resolution 2020-2071-2.6, a resolution providing for the amendment of the approved fiscal year 21-22 budget for the IDC Commerce Road and the Blackwater Road projects. Uh, item 9F is uh, consideration of the approval to award bid number PC22-037 for the Millville AWT facility UV replacement to JMP Construction of Tuscaloosa, Alabama in the amount of $2,001,000. Uh, this item came up before your, for your consideration uh, at the last meeting uh, and you uh, uh, asked to delay uh, so I could gain some additional information. Uh, we've been able to work with the county uh, and have continued to receive information up to and including uh, information as late as uh, this morning uh, with regard to that. There is a possibility, but we don't know definitively, that we could uh, migrate into the AWT. Uh, as you know, we were very fortunate uh, from uh, the state legislature to gain a $1.5 million study to do the Millville Wastewater Treatment Relocation uh, study uh, to determine several courses of action. Do we continue to keep the Millville wastewater treatment where it is and harden it and invest in it? Do we move the flow to the AWT in partnership with the county and the consortium of uh, city partners there? Do we redirect some of the flow to St. Andrews? Do we uh, create a new uh, wastewater treatment plant? All of these are going to be uh, definitively uh, evaluated in the study. Additionally, if we do go to the AWT under emergency purposes, they think that they could absorb some of our capacity, uh, uh, or excuse me, some of the demand that we would place on their capacity, not 100%. Uh, so we would have to, as we did the 13 lift stations, some of those lift stations are acti actually contemplating separating the flow that actually goes to Millville and redirecting that flow of uh, uh, raw sewage back to the 23rd Street mill uh, plant so that we can start absorbing the capacity there and reduce the demand on Millville, uh, which would be potentially a reduction of demand of ultimately placed on the AWT if we go that route. It's, uh, it's uh, the point of connection, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Henry when he uh, shared that last uh, at the last meeting, and uh, uh, we did some research actually in cooperation. We do have a discharge line that goes adjacent to the West Rock uh, location and it eventually goes out to the bay as a discharge line. Uh, we could tap into that discharge line and go into the active line with that goes, that's a county line that actually takes untreated uh, sewage and goes to the military point AWT. It's a lot more, probably more information you really want to know, but the point is it's, it's really important. It's, it's, it's one thing to make the connection. It's another to have to flow it. We would have to actually create lift stations to help move the flow that's currently aggregated at Millville Treatment Plant and now pump that further all the way to uh, Military Point at Tyndall Air Force Base. Um, it's not undoable, but it's not an overnight solution. Uh, it must be, in my estimation, to be prudent, it must go through the study process to be evaluative, to determine the cost-benefit ratio to each of those alternatives that I described, and to ensure that we continue to meet our, uh, not only current demands on the system, but future growth demands, which we're all anticipating. That said, it's still, uh, we're under a consent order with the DEP. Uh, with regard to ensuring that the UV lighting system is replaced. Uh, this is a system that is portable, so if we do go out to the AWT, we could take this out to them and help to treat uh, uh, microbiologics before they discharge into the bay. Um, or it could be relocated to another wastewater treatment plant if we choose to go that route, at, for example, hypothetically, in Panama City North. So it would not be a wasted investment. Um, lastly, it would meet our requirements with DEP under the consent order, and we have until December of this year. We're under, already under an extension on that consent order for this activity. Uh, it would allow us to get this done by December. Otherwise, we're subjected to potential fines and penalties as well as uh, uh, potentially uh, uh, denying any future permits for growth within the city until we get this done. All that said, I think it's a prudent expenditure. 
It's being funded through the state revolving fund. Uh, so we already have the benefit of having a 75% uh, or excuse me, a 25% reduction of the fee on this at, once we uh, complete the SRF expenditures uh, because that's a 25% forgiveness on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think for all the right reasons, uh, we need to move forward on this. Uh, it meets our DEP requirements. It continues to ensure that the mill Ville wastewater treatment plant is operating as designed and currently permitted with a view of having the flexibility to move this asset uh, in the future. That's motion my recommendation. On 9F. Move approval. Second a motion, Mayor. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, Sorry, that might. sounded very pre-planned, my goodness. <laughs> I thought you wanted to make that. Ask, um, ask Michael. If you uh, hey, that. listen, uh, Michael and I have had lots of conversations about this. There's only, I forget, all what's on the table right now. The only thing that you say that still concerns me is that we're going to wait till the study's done about Millville because just, I mean, I know that to me these are two different things. Mm -hmm. To me this is an emergency because mm -hmm. today it's this $2 million, tomorrow it's going to be something else. It is. And then something yep. else, something it's else. because that plant this is, is an failing. emergency mm -hmm. to me. And you're telling me this, you know, UV can go to the next way, even if we're helping the county out, mm -hmm. whatever. I don't care. But what, I, what I'm concerned about is that we're going to be like, let's, I, I do not think we need a study to hook up. We, if they, they know what capacity they can do, do for us, right? And then we know what we'd have to push back. To me, the study is about the future of the growth. And so we, we know that we are interested in Panama City North, right? So that, it feels like it's two separate things. If I can and understand that. We know that we don't need lift stations to push it. Isn't that what the study's mm -hmm. about? It's going to be, I mean, that's it's so, not just the study, to, but it also is the engineering design for right. those component that's parts. We well, that's, it's, that was one of the things that Mark added when we were talking too. So the study dollars can, don't just go towards study. So what mm -hmm. he has communicated back to me was that we will take some of those study dollars and we will engineer this solution. Okay. That's, what that's part of this. Because you know how this goes. Yeah. It'll just be mm -hmm. forever and forever. And I think this is something we need to start engineering now. I don't disagree. And okay. I, I mean, that's why shortly after the storm, I said that this is a 72-year-old facility that right. is neat in massive need of either upgrade or we need to take it off of the water's edge. I mean, it was built back when technology was not on our side. Uh, and uh, that's why it went to right. the water. Well, I just don't want to... I don't want to wait for a study to finish when we can do engineering to go. I would ahead. agree with you. That's I, all I'm asking. I, because I, I don't want to sit here and it come back mm -hmm. again because we were like, well, we're waiting on this study. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we can have, we've got enough qualified engineers around here that we could certainly do a task order to get that all worked out. Well, we, we finalized the subrecipient agreement uh, with the DEP on this uh, $1.5 million. So now we can, we're working on the scope of work for the RFQ to get that engineering that services. Good. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that I think that's very important. It and is, so, it's critical. So the county is at least reasonably um, confident that they could utilize the this specific UV treatment possibly at, at AWT. I think we got 1.5 million in capacity. I think we're trying to figure out a way that we can send the rest of Millville's capacity to St. Andrews. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's this is not an unrealistic I, I mean, agree. this is very realistic for yeah. us to be able to do, but it, they, they do need time to do it. And so, right. and I understand that. And I think these two weeks, you guys have accomplished quite a bit in your conversations for two weeks worth of time. Well, and I appreciate the county and their willingness to help uh, absorb our capacity, oh, but they, they clearly do not have the capacity to absorb 100% of what is being utilized in Millville. That's why the 13 critical lift station project was so important to so that we could uh, start reverse flowing some of that that's currently going to Millville to go to the uh, wastewater treatment plant on 23rd Street, which has the capacity to absorb that. All the more and reason to be doing all that engineering at the same time. Exactly correct. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Call you. the roll. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Rader. Yes. Commissioner Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligus. Yes. Mayor, Bur Mayor Bernicki. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Well, to be in your 614, may Barry Nick. Uh, I'm hearing you. DOP go let let y'all uh, put.
put more water than already going into St. Andrews Bay. Because all that sewer that runs in, from St. Andrews runs into St. Andrews Bay. And I'm wondering if they go let y'all uh, increase that flow that you're already putting in there. Uh, since you have built that airport, you got all those buildings, those houses, that's a whole lots of whole lots of sewer there done added to St. Andrews tributary plan already. Uh, reversing, as you said, we do have some lines. So you can't reverse that water from going from going to Mill Mill back to St. Andrews. You do have that, you have that privilege to do that. Mm -hmm. It's there. Uh, but I just want to know where, you know, I know y'all probably thinking of checking in it, but it's just, that's just more sewer going into St. Andrews Bay. There would not be. Um, the current discharge, uh, there are two points of discharge that take place, one from each of the two uh, wastewater treatment plants, uh, and they both discharge, as you indicate, into the bay. Uh, this would be the same amount of discharge. It would just not be um, at the same location. In other words, uh, the discharge from the uh, 23rd Street um, wastewater treatment plant is basically south of uh, the port of Panama City. The second discharge point for the Millville wastewater treatment plant is over south of the port Panama City east. Uh, all, you're, all we would be doing is taking the discharge that's currently going into, out of the Millville wastewater treatment plant into the bay and separating it where some of it will go out of the discharge point from the 23rd Street plant and some of it will go out of the AWT. The net total is still the same amount going into the bay. The difference is it'll be one less point being discharged into the bay. Now, um, Governor DeSantis signed state, Senate Bill 64, which is uh, directive by 2032, that all discharge going into state waters must be removed from state waters. And so this would be part of our strategy to help reduce that requirement off of the city. So we're gonna take a five minute break, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Sound system on. There we go. There okay, we go. thank you. Uh, I think we're ready to reconvene, Mr. Mayor, and uh, thank you very much for the break. Uh, draw your attention item 9G was consideration and approval for the demolition, removal, and disposal of a 28,292 square foot uh, church facility at 2511 East 3rd Street uh, to breaking ground. Uh, the uh, City of Panama City, through the city's purchasing division, solicited bids from experienced and qualified contractors to provide the demolition services for this address. Uh, this is a unfit, unsafe structure. It's gone through the code enforcement process, and with that, uh, it's the recommendation that we approve to the lowest bidder, which is break in ground in the amount of $132,500. I'll move a motion. Second a motion. Any discussion? Call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes, yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes 5 0. Item 9H is uh, consideration and approval of change order number three for the Ballards and Pad Eyes project to the Eastern Shipbuilding Incor Group Incorporated in the amount of $399,951 in accordance with change order number three, uh, which is approved and recommended by DRMP, which is the CEI services for the city of Panama City. This change order is incorporated in the Triumph Gulf Coast grant and is fully reimbursable. Uh, in accordance with the agenda uh, item request, uh, which was dated in January 5th, 2022, the city approved the contract and the scope, which was vetted by DRMP for the Eastern Shipbuilding Group to provide the installation of the bollards and pad eyes for the $599,884. Also in accordance with another uh, I agenda item request, uh, which was dated in April 5th, 2022, the city approved the change order number two, which was vetted by DRMP and Eastern Shipbuilding for the additional existing office building. This change order, number three, is for Eastern Shipbuilding uh, to provide the fabrication and installation of the fender structure associated with the bollard and pad eye construction. Uh, with that, uh, it's my recommendation we move forward with uh, change order number three in the amount of $399,951 to the Eastern Shipbuilding Group Incorporated. Motion on 9H. Move approval, Mayor. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion. Call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Item 9I is the pre demolition work for the existing Panama City Marina Civic Center. As background information, the city solicited proposals for <coughs> architectural and engineering services for the pre demolition work for the existing Marina Civic Center. JRA was the only A&E firm that submitted a proposal. JRA and their consultants are well qualified to perform the work and their firm fixed fee price was $62.50, which appears to be fair and reasonable. Uh, with that, it's the recommendation we move forward uh, with the contract award to JRA uh, Engineering Services. Motion on 9 I. A motion to approve, Mayor. The I'll second it, but this is just for engineering. The, the, this structure is going to require a, a demo plan that is crafted by an yes. engineering firm to be able to do it. That's all this is doing is starting that, that process. Uh, we're approximately, approximately day 55 in the 60-day time frame that the, the FEMA arbitration panel has to make a determination on our arbitration request. Uh, with that, we know that the structure will need to be demoli demolished regardless of what that outcome yes. is. Right. Uh, and this is starting that process so that we can do the planning and have an engineered approved set of plans for how to demo that structure. Thank you, sir. Yes. How long does this process take? The demo, the demo plan part. Like, how long does oh, that take? To come I would, um, what, two or three months? About three, about three, about three, about three months. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligus? Yes. Mayor Bernicke? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, item 9J is the consideration of a mid-year inflationary adjustment to the city's pay plan. As background information, uh, requesting your approval to increase the overall pay rates for the all city employee of the city of Panama City by 4.5% effective immediately this date, July 12, 2022, due to the inflationary pressures that we have experienced uh, across the, this uh, nation. As of May 2022, the consumer price index for the southeast region of the United States was 9.2% over the previous year, causing increased financial pressures for our team members. These adjustments are necessary due to the increases in basic goods that all of our citizens are facing to include our employees, uh, which is inclusive of fuel and housing and other commodities uh, to maintain their basic living needs. And that 
uh, this addition, uh, this adjustment assists our city in being more competitive in recruiting and retaining uh, our current team members. Uh, it's a very difficult time uh, for everyone, for sure, but uh, I would humbly request your approval for this mid-year adjustment. Uh, this is part of a larger strategy. As I come to you with the budget for next year, uh, one of the things that we're looking at is since the state has approved through the electoral process a $15 minimum wage, as you can see, we're not even at $15 minimum wage. And so in October, having more of a budgetary outlook and being able to plan fiscally, I intend to make that adjustment at that time, uh, making that recommendation. In the interim, we clearly have uh, our teammates, as uh, all citizens, have realized a 9.2% reduction, effective reduction in their buying power. This only goes halfway to meet that need. Motion on 9J. I'd like to move approval of that. I'd like to thank staff for doing this. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Rader? Yes. Commissioner Street? Yes. Commissioner Halligas? <coughs> yes. Mayor Bernicki? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. I had to do this at the funeral home too. People don't have money to drive to work. What, what does this do to the, like, what's the, what does, how much does this change the budget just for that part? Like, what does that work, or do we not know that? What will we do? And it's only, we're doing it from today through the rest of this budget year. And we have, because we have a number of vacancies, we're taking the um, uh, unrealized expenses to be able to do it. It's approximately $2 million uh, to be able to do this, uh, to take Just care of our employees. From this point to the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wait, yeah. okay. $2 million for the total For year. the total. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, for the no, no, no. For, the, yeah. for annually, it's $2 million. Okay. So it would be, you know, 25% of that. So, you know. Five hundred thousand dollars. I was about to say, isn't yeah. getting a pretty good? No, they're, 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 <laughs> no. Well, still though, I mean, even two million dollars in the budget. That's, I mean, it's great. It's yeah. what we need to do. But I just wanted right. everybody because it's, it's kind of good to think of it like that when we're figuring out the budget for other things. That's right. Like other things that maybe we're not going to do because mm -hmm. we're going to be paying our people better, which that's is great. Right. That's we right. We have to compete and with hiring people. Well, we do, and uh, you know, right now we're we have fifty one. Uh, authorized positions in our right-of-way crews, and we're short 31. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, this past week, uh, a number of our uh, employees went out and helped our right-of-way crews to do mowing around the city. Uh, we're short 16 police officers. We're short, I think it's five firefighters. I mean, it's we need to be competitive, and uh, this is a very difficult time uh, economically for the nation and all of our citizens locally. Uh, but this uh, certainly will assist our employees uh, in a marginal way as we strive to move toward that minimum $15 an hour. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, with that, I move your attention to item 9K, uh, which is the consideration of approval to purchase uh, one crane truck from Ingram Equipment Company in the amount of $166,985.77. Uh, as background information through the City Public Work Department, a request for proposal was advertised to review competitive proposals for the purchase of a crane truck. The City received two sealed bids, which were evaluated and met the minimum requirements for the RFP. With that, it's the recommendation that we go with the uh, bid uh, provided by Ingram Equipment Company in the amount of $166,985.77. This crane truck will be utilized by our utility department to assist. This is one of the, they use to remove pumps and other activities out of the deep well, so this is a necessary piece of equipment. Motion on 9K. Yes, I'd like to move approval and it is budgeted. Second a motion, Mayor. Discussion, call the roll. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Rader. Yes. Commissioner Street. Yes. Commissioner Halligas. Yes. Mayor Bernicki. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Buell, which one of these do you want to speak on? Is it the, is it the one coming up, the first one? Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let him let him go ahead and do the first reading, and then and then okay. you can just you can sit yeah, right, just sit right here, together. and then you can do that. I knew you were here wait, waiting for one of them. Go go ahead. Okay. Because these are all first readings today. And normally, people show up at the second reading, but but we'll. <laughs> You're good. Well, not, not a problem. I'd so rather it, you talk the first one. Yeah, so, me too. So with that, the first uh, item 10A is first reading of ordinance 3077.1, the voluntary annexation of 0.68 acres of property located at 208 West Baldwin Road, Panama City, 
As background information, the applicant is requesting an annexation and future land use change and rezoning to utilize city services. This item was uh, reviewed by the planning board on June 13th, 2022, and the planning board recommended approval unanimously. With that, it's a recommendation we conduct the first reading of the request for annexation. First reading, ordinance number 3077.1, an ordinance of the city approving the voluntary annexation of 0.68 <coughs> acres of unincorporated property located at 208 West Baldwin Road, Bay County, and to the city as further defined, amending the ward's boundaries of the city to include said land and providing for an effective date. Yes, My name is Buell Harper. I live at 314 West Baldwin Road. and. Uh, Somehow I have an investment in this city with all the office buildings that I pay taxes on for a number of years. And some of you have known me for a long time. Now, what I want to speak to is there's, there's three of these that come up. It's uh, 10A, mm -hmm. 10B, and 10C. They're all together. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. The reason that most people aren't here is that we obtained the agenda from the city planning board and it said that the public comment will be heard at the final reading on Tuesday, July the 26th. I took a chance. I thought maybe I might be able to speak here. Uh, the, pro uh, the real problem we have is that many people, let me back up, in the 1970s, Chapman Land Company bought all this area in there from St. Joe Paper Company. And Mr. Chapman developed most of what is known as Forest Park. Some of it he did into uh, small plot communities with utilities from the city of Panama City. Give some clarification. That's Davis Chapman from Dothan, correct? That's a different. That's correct. It's yeah. not the, it's That's not right. the Chapman, Chapman you made. Family. That's You're correct. You're right about that. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, the, the corporation, they, he had two corporations, Chapman Land Company and Diley Madison Development Company. Uh, I don't know why he did, he did all the small subdivisions in Dolly Madison Development Company and the big ones were in Chapman Land Company. And he was a major investment in a large bank in Dover. Uh, I started doing work for him in the 1960s when I moved here. And uh, I did most of this area where we're discussing now, where I live. This was done because there was no utility, so what he did was he subdivided it into large lots. Most of the lots are in excess of one half acre. And they were, the one half acre was so that it would meet the state requirements for a septic tank and a well. Mm -hmm. Where we live now, my wife and I, we have a septic tank and a well, and our property is about 1.5 acres. Now, he recorded and I just mentioned this to, to Nevin. He recorded restricted covenants for this area in three separate documents covered. There's approximately 30 homes in this area that is under these covenants. When I brought these, that issue to the uh, planning board, it was kind of like, well, we really just don't care. It doesn't make any difference to me or to us that there's restrictive covenants on these, on these lots. And the covenants is for residential property. No structure shall be erected, altered, planned, or permitted to remain at any residential building lot other than one detached single family dwelling. Okay? These covenants run with the land. And all of that was brought to the planning board attention. And like I said, they didn't. Well, one, one person made a statement there that he said, well, I just think that Baldwin Avenue ought to be commercial. Well, no, these are our homes, and we don't desire to be turned into a commercial area. Uh, personally, if somebody wants to get in the city, that's fine. But for them to turn around and change it from a single-family dwelling to multi-use, that's not fine with me. That's not the area I want to live in. That's not the reason I built a home there. And, and I really wish that the city would reconsider this situation. Okay. Now, I don't know what Thank our you. alternatives are. I know that you, the city didn't make an agreement with Chapman Land Company, but the landowners did. 
and that when the city changes the use of the land, they are assisting someone to violate the covenants and restrictions that they agreed to when they bought the property. Now, I know this is asinine, but the city right now really needs some launch, some place that you can launch in the water. Why don't we go down in the cove and build a large marina in the cove? That wouldn't go over very big, would it? <laughs> I'm looking at one person that probably objects real quick. But that's the way we feel about our homes in our area, okay? We do not want them turned into... We got more... We got more Look, if the city wants Bill, to your time's it. up, so I've, I've let you cover this issue. So I, we we could talk about it, and, and we'll talk about restrictive covenants, and, and we've got, and we're not going to be voting on this today. So we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Thank you. Do you want, do you would like five copies yes. of this? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we would. Oh well, yes. As long as he's got one, he'll get one to he'll, all of I'll us. I'll get it to him. He'll make copies for us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Um, so we have the first reading on the annexation ordinance. I will just, if I could address that real sure. quickly. Uh, restrictive covenants are private property rights between individuals um, and that it's not something to ignore, but it's not something specifically for the city commission to enforce, but obviously anything like this that bears on the wisdom of how a piece of property is to be uh, zoned in the future, whether it should be commercial or whether it should stay residential is all uh, valuable information. But what I will do, and I mentioned to Mr. Harper, I will look at this and, uh, and, and in particular how it does or could impact any future decision and I'll communicate directly with him as Thank well you. as anybody else. Thank, Thank you. you. Does he agree to did you read it? I believe I did. Okay. Yeah, okay. So okay. So I read it's already been read. All right. Thank you. So we're on 10B. All right, thank you. So uh, item 10B is first reading of ordinance 3077.2, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation and mixed use for the property located at 208 West Baldwin Road. Uh, as background information, it's the same as I shared earlier in the annexation agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading of ordinance 3077.2, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of mixed use for a parcel of property located at 208 West Baldwin Road, Panama City, providing for a uh, repealer, <coughs> providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. And just to confirm, I had also had the first reading of 3077.1 that dealt with the voluntary annexation. Thank you. Item 10C is uh, first reading of Ordinance 3077.3, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect a zoning designation and mixed use 3, MU3, for the property located at 208 West Baldwin Road. It's background information. It's the same as I shared in the agenda amendment, annexation amendment agenda request, and it's a recommendation we conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3077.3. An ordinance zoning a parcel of property located at 208 West Baldwin Road, Panama City, having approximately 0.68 acres, mixed use three, providing for severability and an effective date. Item 10B is the first reading of ordinance 3078.1, voluntary annexation of 0 0.30 acres of property located at 1311 West 30th Street. As background information, uh, the, the applicant wants to annex into the city and split the lots into 250 by 132 uh, foot single uh, family residential home lots. Uh, this item was reviewed by the planning board on June 13th, 2022, and the planning board recommended approval unanimously. With that as a recommendation, we conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading ordinance 3078.1, an ordinance of the city approving the voluntary annexation of 0.3 acres of unincorporated property located at 1311 West 30th Street and to the city is further defined, amending the ward's boundaries and to include said land and providing for an effective date. Item 10E is the first reading of Ordinance 3078.2, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of residential for the property located at 1311 West 30th Street. As background information is the same as I shared in the annexation agenda request and the recommendation is to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3078.2, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect a land use 
designation of residential for a parcel of property located at 1311 West 30th Street, Panama City, providing for repealer severability and effective date. Item 10F is the first reading of Ordinance 3078.3, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect a zoning designation of residential 2, R2, for the property located at 1311 West 30th Street. It's background information is the same as I shared earlier, the annexation agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation we conduct a first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3078.3, an ordinance zoning a parcel of property located at 1311 West 30th Street, Panama City having approximately 0.3 acres, R2, providing for severability and effective date. <coughs> Item 10G is the first reading of Ordinance 3079.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation and mixed use for the property located at 512 Craft Avenue. It's background information. The information was reviewed by the Planning Board on June 13, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended approval unanimously. With that, it's the recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3079.1, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of mixed use for parcels of property located at 512 Craft Avenue, providing for repealer severability and effective date. Continuing the public hearing, uh, item 10H is first reading of Ordinance 3079.2, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect a zoning designation of mixed use 2, MU2, for the property located at 512 Craft Avenue. It's background information, it's the same as I shared in the future land use agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance Number 3079.2, an ordinance zoning parcels of property located at 512 Craft Avenue, having approximately 1.12 acres, mixed use two, providing for severability and an effective date. Just to make sure, there isn't anyone here that to speak on any of these, is there? Oh. There is, okay, so which one? That's the next one. Okay, all right, so right after, go, go ahead. I wanna make sure we didn't blow past you. Go, yep. go ahead. Jeff. So item 10I is the first reading of ordinance 3080.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation and mixed use for the property located at 908 East 16th Street. As background information, this item was reviewed by the planning board on June 13th, 2022, and the planning board recommended approval unanimously. With that, it's the recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3080.1, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of mixed use for parcels of property located at 908 East 16th Street, providing for repealer, severability, and effective date. Barbara mentioned 908 East 16th Street, Panama City, Florida. Um, the house that we built was built in 1959, and we moved there when I was two years old. Uh, the land was, there was residential uh, houses there, but we are the only house left there, and it's in a light industrial um, area, and we wanted to change it to mixed use so that if anything happens to our house, we will be able to rebuild it. Reasonable make make makes sense. Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, item 10J is the uh, first reading of Ordinance 3080.2, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect a zoning designation of mixed use 3, MU3, for the property located at 908 East 16th Street. It's the same information as I shared earlier in the future land use agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, Ordinance 3080.2, an ordinance zoning parcels of property located at 908 East 16th Street, Panama City having approximately 0.14 acres, mixed use three, providing for severability and an effective date. Item 10K is the first reading of Ordinance 3081.1, amending the future land use map of the city to reflect a land use designation of public institutional for the following parcels. <coughs> Excuse me, 17336 0. 10-0-0-0-0, parcel 17342-0-0-0-0-0-0, parcel 17351-0-0-0-0-0-0, <coughs> <coughs> 
parcel 17349-000-000, parcel 17352-000-000, Parcel 17347-000-000, Parcel 17346-000-000, and Parcel 17345-000-000. Could you repeat that? I forgot a zero. Zero chance of that happening. Okay. As background information is reviewed by the Planning Board on June 13th, 2022, and the Planning Board recommended approval unanimously with that recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. Okay, first reading, I will incorporate the uh, numbers as read by Mr. Uh, McQueen, known as the MLK Property Recreation Area. Ordinance number 3081.1, an ordinance amending the comprehensive plan future land use map of the city to reflect the land use designation of public institutional for parcels of property located in and around the MLK Recreation Center. Uh, pursuant to the parcel numbers, Mr. McQueen has read, Panama City, providing for repealer severability and effective date. Chicken. <coughs> Item 10L is uh, first reading of Ordinance 3081.2, amending the zoning map of the city to reflect the zoning designation of public institutional PI for the following parcels, which are the same parcels I read on item agenda 10K. Uh, in and around the Martin Luther King Recreation Center. With that, it's the same uh, information as I shared in the future land use agenda request, and as such, it's a recommendation to conduct the first reading of the ordinance. First reading, ordinance number 3081.2, an ordinance zoning parcels of property located at the parcel numbers previously read and presented in the ordinance around the MLK Recreation Center having approximately 2.5 acres, public institutional, providing for severability and an effective date. Mr. Mayor, uh, commissioners, I, uh, in two points. Uh, number one, uh, I would be remiss uh, if I did not acknowledge uh, that we have a new director of our planning department, and it's Michael Fuller. It's in front of us today, uh, and we're really delighted that he has joined the team. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the dynamic duo of Michael as well as uh, Joan Haley uh, will help to lead our planning efforts significantly. I want to thank Joan for all of her great work standing in the gap and continuing our planning process. You did a brilliant job. Thank you so much for doing so. Yes. And with that, uh, the only thing that's remaining is a, a separate meeting with the nonprofit. Uh, it will take less than five minutes, so I would ask that we just. One, one small thing, because yes, I know that maybe if I don't talk about it here, I can't get it going quicker. <laughs> The uh, commercial water thing for home businesses, can we get that together and just all together maybe just take that out of the ordinance? You know what I'm talking about. So like a home business, if I have an LLC. Oh, oh right, right. Okay, right. There, mm -hmm. people are already being charged for these commercial rates. You know about this oh, too. Yeah. And they're just, they're not, no one's mm -hmm. impacting the sewer and water. And I talked to Gray, he's gone already, but I talked to him about it and mm -hmm. he said, well, unless there's a way to enforce, like if you have 10 or more people, and we're right. done. So can we just take that out? That was an ordinance when we didn't have the internet and all the, just that portion. I mean, we'll talk commercial rates right. for commercial yeah. buildings, but happy can we to, please do that? Happy to okay. pursue that. Uh, it will affect it our, it, it is small, uh, but we do need to go back and modify uh, the, the rules because our utility rates are based on the type of parameters that are already languaged in our uh, uh, utility structure. Uh, I don't disagree. I mean, it's, there's, there's no home, difference. Home-based businesses because yeah. you wouldn't even know it was there. You know, that, that ordinance was written just brick and mortar. So right. I understand. I can't think of a single, I, I tried to, I can't think of a single home-based business that would require any impact to the water and sewers. Mm -hmm. I don't think it will affect the people who were getting these right. are people who were are only being kind and paying a business license right. and really don't need money. So, okay. Sorry. Thank Couldn't you. Couldn't agree more. Okay. So we're adjourned on the meeting. We're going to start our not-for-profit. <laughs>